Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today what I wanted to do was pick up a series that I haven't been doing lately, and that's going to be the Captain's Log. Now, for those of you that have been around a little bit longer, you'll probably remember the series. It's about helping you to become a better pilot, a better player through tips, tricks, advice, guides, whatever. But I haven't really been doing it a whole lot lately, and that's based on a couple different things. One, I just haven't been flying as much. Other games have gotten in the way. And two, I just haven't had as much time to game lately because my job's been really crazy. So with that in mind, I wanted to go ahead and pick this up because these are the types of videos that I really enjoy doing. And for those of you that are having a hard time aiming, I think this video is something that may be beneficial to you. Now this isn't like hidden information or something that's like totally um, you know, confidential. It's out there. It's in the game. So you probably know about this. But if you don't, hopefully this can kind of help you out. So for those of you that have joysticks, that have really nice software, you can go in and play with your curves, uh, play with your sensitivity, set it up to where you get the responsiveness that you want, but some joysticks don't have that high level software, even nice joysticks. You know, I use an X52 Pro, but the software sucks. And there's a way that you can kind of finagle it a little bit, but you can actually do this within game. So in order to do that, you just come into your options, go into your control options, and then you just pick whatever your interface is. So you either, you're either using a mouse, you're either using a gamepad, or you're using a HOTUS. I'm using a HOTUS, so I'm going to show it to you in here. And this is going to be more beneficial to those that are using gamepads or a joystick or a HOTUS. It is beneficial to a mouse player. Uh, that being said, it, you know, the mouse just has an inherent level of accuracy with it where it's not as big of a deal using that type of device. So... When you come in here, a very standardized curve, the default one that you're actually going to be on is a straight line. And what this line is, is it's basically saying you've got a one-to-one -one ratio of how your ship is going to respond. Now, you can set this up a couple different ways. And just using the slider bar down here, if you increase the number, you're basically desensitizing your controller. So by doing that, you're actually seeing your curve come down. So these are all gonna, it basically means you have to move your controller more in order to make your ship move what you normally would. Now you can do that on the flip side and actually do something like this where it's way more sensitive um, for doing a less of a motion. Now this obviously looks like kind of a nightmare and specifically what we're talking about is aiming. Now the kind of standard best practice curve that we see out there a lot is what's known as like an S curve. And what I actually found to work out best for me is something along these lines. For me, uh, I get into situations where if my enemy's here, I'll move my, and my reticle is here, I'll move my mouse like this, but my ship will end up pointing somewhere over here. It's just not real effective. So for finer tuned aiming in combat, I like having this set up to where it's a little bit desensitized uh, on my initial movement with my joystick, which is why you're seeing this type of format. So here, on this side of the line, I'm having to move my controller more in order to accomplish the same type of movement. But that works out really well when you're trying to make those fine-tuned aiming. That being said, I don't want to have to you know, make slower turns in order to sacrifice this, so when my controller gets out towards the, out, the, the exterior of its movement, then all of a sudden the sensitivity cranks up and make, ends up meeting up where it would have been in the long term. Now you can play with this and kind of make it however you want, but that's the one that I found that works best for me. So I've showed you how to actually, and I'm doing it down here so I don't dick up my current settings, um, but I've already showed you, you can just use these to move it around if you like, but if you really want to get the more customized one, there's you basically just click on the grid, it's going to give you this little warning saying that you're going to be expanding it, and then you just drag the dots, you know, you click it, pull it down, click the next one, pull it down, click the next one, move it to where you want it, um, and then you know it can go up and you just continue. Now one thing that I would suggest is if you're setting up a curve like this, you don't need all of these dots, and you can actually end up just deleting one if you want, and that's gonna kinda help smooth out your curve a little bit. Um, and you can just kinda rinse, repeat, and do the whole thing all the way up to the top, and there you go. But let's say all of a sudden you've got some weird request or you want to add more. You can add them in by just double clicking where you actually want one. You know, like I could just go boom and all of a sudden you've got this weird little hiccup there. Play with it. See what works best for you. Everybody, this is a totally different, it's a feel thing. But for me, this type, well not this type, I'm going to cancel that. Um, this type of curve is what I think works best. Now there is one thing that's a little bit wonky with this. Um, and I just wanted to show you real quick because it, it, it kind of drove me crazy trying to figure it out. So let's say you get a curve set and you want to play with it 
and you want to get into game and you find out, hey, you know, it turns out this isn't working for me. I need something different, you know. Um, that's okay. You know, you can come back in after you save it and make adjustments. Well, part of the problem is the game doesn't really like to update it. So I'm going to just kind of make this really drastic so you can tell that I'm not just <laughs> BSing you out as far as how this performs. Um, all right, it's pretty clear that's not the same one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. You would think it's saved, but once you go back in to edit the curve, it's still where it was before. Now, there's a pain in the ass way to get around this, and basically the best way to do it is just come down to the slider, change it, you know, and then go back to your starting point, uh, and then save that, then go back in and make your adjustments. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop, 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 eh, whatever. You get the general idea. So I'm going to hit save. And now when I go look at this again, you're going to see it's exactly what I just did. So again, it's not real intuitive that way, but it is something that you can do and something that ends up working to get you back to where you were before. For me, I've only really made three adjustments to this point, and that's been um, flight pitch, flight yaw, and flight roll. But you have the options to make a ton of different adjustments, so I encourage you to go out and play with them to see if you can find something that really meets your needs. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other one, and we're almost done here, is actually going to be up under Game Settings. And in here you've got the Flight Lead Pip Reticle. Now we talked a while back about using the, the pips and how they actually work. And you've got two different options. You've got the Lead Pip or you've got the Lag Pip. Now the lead pip is actually going to show you where you need to shoot. It's basically the ship is estimating the trajectory of where that enemy ship is going to be. And then you can shoot at those boxes and you should hopefully be landing your shots. The alternative to that is actually the lag pip. And that actually puts you in a situation to be where you can get a little bit more precise. Now it's kind of nice to have the lag pip. And it's not necessarily going to... Here's the turn. Here's the trade-off. On the lead pip you're probably more likely to land more shots. On the lag pip, you're able to be much more specific. It's showing exactly where the bullets are going to land. So it, there's probably not a huge difference in Arena Commander right now, but as we start getting bigger ships, I would encourage you to get good with the lag pip. So turn lead pip reticle to no, because then you're going to start being able to disable ships at will. You get that option to really choose where you want to hit. So. Um, there you have it, a couple pieces of advice specifically about aiming and targeting and setting up your sensitivities for better control. Uh, if you have questions about any of this, please let me know. Um, otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful day. Um, stay tuned for more content, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.